the first case of immunodeficiency virus was found in the states of USA in the summer of 1981 and since then there has been no perfect cure for HIV. Hi, I am Dr. Manira Dasmana, Associate Consultant in the Department of Internal Medicine at Max Super Speciality Hospital, Dehradun. So there have been a lot of frequently asked questions about HIV and AIDS. I am here to answer a few questions which I felt were very important for all of you to know. So the first thing is that that what is the basic classification of HIV and AIDS? So HIV now, the Central Disease Control has made the classification into 0, 1, 2 and 3. So and the other one is unknown. We will not talk about unknown because there are only 2% of population which has been affected by the unknown HIV. So now only focusing on 0 and 3. Zero means that a patient came to me in the OPD and his incidental finding was that he was HIV positive and the second finding was HIV negative from the first finding which was found in within the six months of lifespan. So this is zero classification. Then we come to stage three which is acquired immunodeficiency virus. That means now the patient has AIDS. One and two are in between the classifications. As you know that HIV only affects the T lymphocytes which are also known as CD4 T lymphocytes. These CD4 T lymphocytes have a very important role in HIV. Why? Because they are also used as a classification as well as they are also used in the treatment. So now coming to the stage 0 classification that I have already explained to you. That means the patient was positive once but now has become negative within the first 6 months. Stage 1 is that the patient was positive within 1 year and then his CDC4 count were less than 750. That means now the patient has AIDS. Stage 2 is that the patient was HIV positive from 1 to 5 years and if the CD4 counts are less than 500, he has AIDS. And stage 3, AIDS means that less than CD4 count of less than 200 and the patient was HIV positive for more than 6 years. The most important query of the general population. If a patient comes to the OPD and his incidental finding is that he is HIV positive, how to go about it? Most of the patients take a lot of time to you know, absorb this information that is given to them because it is a very emotional thing for them. So how do you go about in this? The first thing is that you have to reassure the patient that might be he's HIV negative. And how do we go about it? The first thing that we tell him is that the HIV that was done was from the enzyme immunoassay panel. So we again tell him that you have to repeat your enzyme immunoassay panel, which is also known as EIA. If in EIA, again, the patient is positive, we tell him that to reconfirm, we have to do a Western blot test for the patient. If the Western blot test also come to be positive, then we have to establish the case as HIV positive. But what if the Western blot test comes negative or intermediate? If the Western blot test comes intermediate, we cannot hang the patient around. We have to tell him the two most sensitive and specific tests, which are HIV P24 antigen or HIV RNA level. And if by chance the Western blot is negative, we again have to ask the patient that he needs to get the test done after three or six months. The most important social taboo that patients always ask me, that if you're sitting with an HIV or AIDS positive patient, can we share something from their table or can we drink the water that they have already been drinking? So the answer is yes, you can. Because as we know, a saliva contains a protective agents which basically do not let the, uh, uh, the virus spread to our body. So the answer is yes, we can normally treat them and we can share food with them and beverages with them too. Post exposure profile access in a healthy individual. So we are talking about healthy individuals over here who have been exposed with a patient of HIV. It can be a healthy individual or a healthcare worker also. So let's talk about that. The first thing that you have to remember is that there are some exposure codes. The first code is that either there was a mucous membrane. The second code is that the skin was intact. And the third code is that there was a needle injury which was very deep that we call percutaneous. Let's talk about first one that is mucous membrane. Mucous membrane means either the conjunctiva or the, the blood or the bloody pro, uh, products or the seminal fluid or vaginal uh, discharge of the patient went into the mucous membrane or the conjunctiva of the patient. How do you approach then? Definitely you have to go to the doctor and the doctor you have to tell two things. The first thing is whether these secretions stayed there for a very long time 
or they were very small secretions then the doctor will tell you you don't need any post exposure profile access you just need to uh, again check your hiv in another 3 months but if the amount was large that means the secretions of a infected hiv uh, patient were large and they, you have been exposed for a very long time then you need a standard regime for 28 days the other thing that you have to remember is that for post exposure profile access you have to go to the doctor within 72 hours that is the cdc rules as far as naco is concerned they say that within 2 hours of post exposure profile access you have to meet your doctor as far as intact skin is concerned and if there was some bloody discharge or any other fluid of a hiv infected patient then the doctor will always tell you that you don't have to worry because his skin was intact and the third and the most dangerous one is percutaneous discharge percutaneous means that there was a very severe needle prick injury or you already had a open healthy wound on your hand or anywhere in your body where the blood or bloody products of the hiv infected person have gone then you have to take a standard regime along with an extended regime for 28 days i'll again repeat it the cdc says which is a us organization that you can come into the doctor within 72 hours and your the 28 days regime should be started but according to indian guidelines they say that you have to come into the meet a doctor within 2 hours to conclude hiv is not a curable disease but yes we can decrease the disease progression by various medications that have come now in the market and also we are doing a lot of research in hiv vaccines but there is no safe hiv vaccine which has come till now i also want to say something about the post exposure profile access in patients who have had a sexual contact the first thing is that it is a social taboo you can always bring in your sexual partner also to sit with the doctor and discuss about the disease progression and also if you have had a sexual contact with some person you can always ask them this is your right to ask them that what was this latest cd4 count and also that what was their viral load because it will help you a lot as a new individual and a healthy individual to see where your hiv and viral load stands in i hope you found this video really informative if you have any queries or question please comment down below thank you